This time on Pedalbox, we're working on the Thunderbird again, and we're gonna try and get this whole bumper section cleaned up and put back on, because it is really, really crusty. Now there's this big chrome surround that sits on the sort of internal bucket that holds all of the light pieces and normally I would try and take this off. However, the nuts on the back of here, some of them are so badly corroded. If I try and put a socket on them, if I even look at them, they will just disintegrate. So I'm definitely not gonna take this off. I'm gonna try and work my best around this and clean up as much as I possibly can, throw some black paint on it and we can get it back on the car. So we're going to start by cleaning up the back. I just need to get these little plastic bits off. These sit behind the light bulbs and protect the connectors so that they don't get as much or any water, in theory, coming through from around the back of this casing, going into and hitting the back of the uh, light clusters. So I'll just get these last two off. Right. So that's all of them out. There are a couple of pads as well, these big kind of, I want to say flexible, but they're really not anymore. These are pieces of material that are bolted onto the corners and they are there, I think, to protect against heat from the exhaust because the exhaust system sits right below this area. Um, and also to protect from any mud and water that gets kicked up by the wheel because it's also right behind the rear wheel arch as well. So we just need to wind the, this off on each side. The one on the far side to my left, um, that has completely disintegrated. I mean, that's, that's the piece and you can see how fragile this is. So I'm gonna have to get some new ones of these at some point um, and replace them because it is really not doing particularly well. So with that off, you can see the kind of fibrous material that this is. And at this point, there is no flex left to it anymore. When you try and bend it, it just breaks away. It is really, really bad. But that's basically as far as I'm gonna disassemble this. I'm gonna get down and clean this whole thing back to not quite bare metal everywhere, but at least no rust anywhere, throw some primer at it, and then paint it black. Well, eventually the wire wheel cup on the drill was not enough. It's very controllable on that. You obviously can run it at multiple speeds. It is just an angle grinder cup on an M12 thread bolt in a drill, but the wire wheel really was needed to do the top and the bottom where it was particularly bad. So I did a little bit on that side um, and then gave up and went to the angle grinder and that finished it up. The cup, however, did a really nice job around the top and where the openings are. It doesn't catch as much, so you're not jerking and sort of having the wheel try to escape from you quite as much. Um, unfortunately, I'm not gonna be able to go down into the chrome plated section, the actual bumper surround. Um, I cannot get that off. The, the nuts that hold it on are in such bad condition. Um, there's a few of them that are all right, but most of them are really badly corroded through. I don't have the hardware to replace them. I don't wanna take it off and then shear lots of bolts and get into doing that. And ultimately, I can't repair the chrome either right now. So I'm gonna have to take this off at a later date and get it done. It is nice and thick. There's no way it's rusting through to holes, although it is a little bit tarnished on the outside. So. That is not a right now problem. You can see on this side where I've used the phosphoric acid, I've actually gone over three quarters of it now and it's come up really nicely. It's got rid of a lot of the um, remaining kind of scale that was there. And obviously a lot of the, um, the rust sort of detritus, the dust and everything else, and just wipe that off at the same time. And it's neutralized it really nicely, so that's great. I've just got this one quarter to do, but I thought I'd show you what the before and after looked like before I finish this off. Safe to say a few days have passed between doing all the work on this bumper and getting it back on the car. It has been a multi-week search to find all of the bolts that I very, very carefully placed roughly in order along the back lip of the uh, boot line and then removed when we took this to the show. That's how long ago it was when this was actually getting done. 
Um, and it's been a number of weeks worth of just weather interruptions. It is still raining even today and we've got an umbrella over the camera just so we can try and get this episode finished in time for it going out. But all of the lights are now back on the car and it looks exactly the same as it did when we took them off. There's only really me that knows that anything has been done behind here because you can't see any of that paint that we did from outside of the car. On the upside, it means it's not going to rust anymore. It's not going to bleed like rust uh, stains down the chrome. So it is a noticeable improvement. And I don't think I could have brought myself to put that rusty old bumper beam back on the car in the state that it was in. But nevertheless, it is annoying. <laughs> Meanwhile, round at the front of the car, not a lot's changed since summer either. But one thing has happened. I have in my hand here a new starter relay, because a few years ago when we were rebuilding, well, not so much rebuilding, but working on the engine a bit, I managed to snap one of the big power studs for this that either comes from the battery or goes to the motor. So we've been waiting quite a while for one to come over from Rock Auto in America. It turns out we actually had one in a box in the garage and we just forgot about it, so go us. But hey, at least we've got a spare now. Unfortunately, the big box of bolts that Aid was looking for for so long to rebuild his tail lights are the same box of bolts that have the ones for the bonnet to the uh, bonnet hinges. So this is also not bolted on, which means we have to do this the hard way, just lifting the whole thing off. Which is kind of a pain because it's enormous and quite heavy. Hang on. Yep. Because it was actually hooked in at the front. Yeah. So this down here is the dead old starter relay, the one that I snapped, and this right here on the top of it is the stud that I broke off of it. We've left it installed with as much as we can wired onto it just so that we've got a good reference for putting the new one in. I don't think we thought it would be this long before we got back to it, but we definitely knew that um, by the time we found our way back to this, we would need a little bit of help. So Adrian is off getting the big blue book, his, uh, his kind of biblical tome containing all the information on where every wire in this car runs, not that there's all that many of them. And while he does that, I'm going to start work just unbolting some of these, taking this off the body and getting the new one installed in its place. So hopefully the only thing that we have to figure out is what exactly went onto this post, because I'm not sure. I'm looking at the other end of it and I'm guessing that obviously looks like a battery connector. So what's coming onto the top of here is probably going to be the wire that runs off to the starter, which raises an interesting question in my mind. Where is it? So we've been through the wiring diagram in our big book over there and we've double checked this is a negative earth vehicle. We've double checked that the wire that runs from the battery negative to the engine block is also negative. For some reason, it's red, but somehow red is also negative here. So maybe that's like a, a, a change that someone's made since getting the car or something. In any case, we think we've got everything wired up, right? We've got the positive onto our starter relay. We've got the other side of the starter relay onto the inexplicably black cable running back toward the starter, uh, starter live. So now we're pretty much ready to just like flick the key and make sure the whole system works and make sure it turns. Mechanically though, we would like to do one more quick check before we do that. So just over a year ago, I managed to snap a valve and bend another one and poke a big hole in my piston in the Rover by trying to start the engine when it was all out of time. Uh, I actually didn't have the timing belt on, but the effect is the same. So to make sure we don't hurt anything, uh, you know, turning it over and maybe hitting a valve or anything, we're just going to turn the engine around a full two revolutions and make sure it goes free with no like uh, horrible, you know, crunching and grinding, no impacts or anything. And then if that works, we'll give it a quick flick and make sure the starter runs. Cool. So it's just over two full turns. I heard a little bit of compression leaking out somewhere over here, which is pretty much what I'd expect. And everything felt nice and smooth. It was stiff, which you'd kind of expect it having been sat as long as it has, but it didn't feel crunchy. It was just a, a sort of heavy, uh, heavy continuous resistance, which I think is about right. So I don't know how Adrian feels, but from my position, I feel pretty happy we can turn this over. And even if something is wrong, it's not going to be like catastrophically mechanically wrong. I'm going to break any moving parts. Right, I'm set that recording. Oop, all right. I'll wait for you to connect um, off. Nothing. Not even a click. I'd expect to at least hear the relay activate. Like at 11 volts, you should absolutely still be able to energize a relay. 
So we've got a battery in the car, we've just tried the ignition from inside and unfortunately there's not a peep, not even a click out of our starter relay. Now we do know the battery we've got is a little bit low, it's a fairly big decent spec battery but it is down around 11 volts, so it's definitely quite badly discharged. On the other hand, you would expect that to still be enough to at least energise the relay even if not the whole motor. So we have had a quick look through the convenient uh, flow chart that's in Adrian's big, uh, big book of info. And there's a step in here, if the relay does not click, it says to bypass the ignition switch, blah, 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 blah. See note three, and note three basically says, run positive directly from the battery to the switch connection on the relay. So I've got a little bit of red wire in my hands here that I'm gonna try that with. And if it does work and the engine leaps into life, I'm probably gonna absolutely cack my pants. Um, and recoil and that will break the connection and everything should be fine. So let's see if that works. First though I've got to figure out which is the switch connection on the relay. Well unfortunately I've got some good news and some very bad news. Uh, it turned out the battery that we were testing with was completely toast. It showed 11 volts but as soon as we put any load on it it went to nothing which is why we weren't seeing anything when we tried it on the key earlier. So we did a few more tests. We tried connecting the starter motor directly to the positive on that. That's how we discovered it was buggered. We then tried on our little uh, battery that we got for the kit car. Uh, it did light up quite a lot. We got a big old arc on the terminals, but because we were just kind of holding the battery terminals onto these, it's not really like a good way to connect them. We couldn't actually use it for a proper test. And at that point we worked out, okay, something in here is working, like the relays energizing, etc. So we brought in the A6, ran some big old jumper cables across and tried running the T-Bird directly from the 14 and some change volts that are coming out of the A6's battery and alternator. At that point, we worked out that the relay does work. We can energize the starter relay if we put 12 volts directly into it. Something in the key or the interlocks or like maybe there's a transmission lockout or something is stopping the ignition key from energizing it, but the relay does work. And if we send power directly into the starter motor, it's a big arc, a lot of current flows, but the engine doesn't turn. And unfortunately, because we're doing all this manually with like holding trigger wires and stuff, we can't get like a proper hold it on for a good bit and get a nice, you know, try to give it some time to unseize. Um, it just looks like the starter might be seized. So we're going to try and get that off and see if we can maybe rebuild it or maybe just replace it, whatever we have to do there. Fast forwarding a few minutes more to the end of the easiest starter motor removal I've ever done in my life. It was the three bolts on the motor and one to release a, uh, a K-frame support that went whoop out the way. It just dropped out real nice and easy. Uh, aid confirmed, after I picked it out, it does still turn really nice and easy, so it's probably not seized, at least in the, the actual motor assembly. It might just be, either it's not seized and we somehow managed to test it wrong, which would be really awful, or it might just be the solenoid on the top there that's seized. So we need to do a bit more testing, and I think for that we're going to bung it in one of our big bench vices in the garage, put 12 volts into it, and see if it spins on the bench. No. So with the starter motor in our bench vise, we can do a proper test, make sure we're connected onto the right terminals and everything, and we've got everything correctly rigged up with our test battery. And unfortunately, we had the positive connected properly onto the positive terminal on the side, the negative connected properly onto there's a little post on the back that you're meant to put a ring terminal on for the earth. We ran it up, a bunch of current flowed. We saw uh, the battery terminal almost melting. There was a huge amount of current going, but there wasn't even a peep out of the battery. The solenoid didn't click, there was no movement. So we reckon this thing is jammed up hard. They are possible to rebuild, uh, but unfortunately rebuilding them depends on one, knowledge that we don't have, and two, probably access to parts that we don't have. So we're probably gonna send this one in for a refurb rebuild and uh, just slap a new one in. And with that unfortunate development, we're probably going to have to stop filming the episode there because there's really nothing more we can do now till a new starter motor arrives from Rock Auto. So if you want to support us in getting new parts and everything for these cars, you can jump on patreon.com forward slash pedal box show. You can support us there from as little as a dollar a month. If you support us for five dollars or more, you also get a discount at the merch store at shop.pedalbox.show where you can buy the nice long sleeve t-shirts that I'm wearing underneath my hoodie. It's helping keep me warm in the admittedly actually pretty good conditions we've got right now but it's also been great the last few miserable days so that's it for this episode everyone hope you liked the video if you do please like it down below if you didn't comment and tell us why and do remember subscribe to the channel make sure to ring the notification bell because of course now we have at least one more episode on the thunderbird before you get to see it running so make sure you don't miss that one